St. John Paul II often reminded us that the priesthood and the Eucharist were born together. He observed how the seed of every priestly vocation is sown in the hearts of young men and brought to fulfilment in the light of the Eucharist. In a similar way, Pope Francis urges young people to listen to Christ in the silence before the tabernacle, because it is in the light of the Eucharist that their vocation will be recognized. This may be said too of all the great vocations, to marriage, to the consecrated life of women and men, to the permanent diaconate or the apostolic life in the world. However, there is an inseparable link between the ministerial priesthood and the Eucharist. Indeed, one cannot be understood without the other. It is perhaps not surprising then that at a time when the sacrifice and sacrament of the Eucharist is too often neglected, when the radiant light of Christ's real presence has become dimmed in the minds of men. And when it can seem too much trouble even to get to Mass on a Sunday, we have seen fewer men ready to offer themselves for the priesthood. Yet when, as in the synagogue of Nazareth, St. Luke tells us, Tonight, the eyes of all are fixed upon Christ, truly present among us today. We can see clearly how we are called to respond to the high demands of his love. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests, attended Mass from childhood offered by priests who traveled from place to place under threat of death. The young Vianney assumed from his earliest years that to become a priest was to be ready to give your own life. For the cure of ours then, the link between the totality of the Eucharistic gift and sacrifice and the total self-giving of a priest's life was always clear. Indeed, the call by which a priest gives his whole life in a celibate consecration can only be fully comprehended in the light of the Eucharist. We sometimes hear celibacy spoken of as if it were merely the denial of the possibility of marriage. This is a short sighted as suggesting marriage demands nothing more than the forsaking of all others. We know that if marriage is a denial of something, it is because it is first and foremost for the great good of husband, wife, and family. In the same way, from the beginning of the church, celibacy and virginity have been understood as being positive for something. St. John Paul II underlined the extent to which the call to celibacy was a totally new departure from the Old Testament tradition. Christ's own celibacy being foreshadowed in the virginal motherhood of men, and in St. Joseph's embrace of this same call to chastity. He explained how all bore witness to a fruitfulness different from that of the flesh, a fruitfulness of the Spirit. The Second Vatican Council declared that by this celibate consecration, a priest clings to Christ with an undivided heart and dedicates himself freely in the service of God and
and me. The priest is thus led to become a man for others, completely available to Christ's kingdom, his heart undivided and capable of accepting new fatherhood in Christ. This is an unconditional love, reflecting the love and sacrifice of the Eucharist. The married clergy of the Anglican tradition, when ordained to the Catholic priesthood, continue to fulfill their married and family obligations, but make the same commitment to celibacy in the event of widowhood. The Second Vatican Council called us to treasure priestly celibacy and to pray that this generous self-giving will be always found amongst us. The Council Fathers made this moving thing. This sacred council asks that not only priests, but all the faithful would cherish the precious gift of priestly celibacy, and that all of them would beg of God always to lavish this gift abundantly on his church. In treasuring this gift of priestly celibacy, we need to recognize more clearly the intimate link between the ministerial priesthood and the reality of the Eucharist. If the Mass were ever reduced in our minds to being merely a commemorative community meal, and the priest is only a community leader or functionary, then the celibacy of the Catholic priesthood might seem extravagant. However, once the ministerial priesthood is seen in the light of Christ's own total self-giving as bridegroom to his bride, the church, then the self-giving of priestly celibacy becomes a reflection of the truth of Christ's own self -giving. In the Vocations Initiative, starting this September at Shrewsbury Cathedral, we are offering a gap year for young men considering this call to the priest. By spending time in a parish and a community, growing in a life of prayer, getting to know the Gospel, the Catholic faith better, but above all, being very close to the Eucharist. For it will be in the full Eucharistic faith and love of this diocese, of our parishes and families, that a new generation of priests will be inspired to so live for Christ, who died and rose again for us. Our high priests continually present in the blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. To him be glory and power forever and ever.